Good evening and welcome to Worship in a New Key. Uh, whether you are a longtime member of our community or a first time guest, uh, I'm probably still too loud. Uh, but we're excited that you've joined us for worship. As we uh, prepare for worship tonight, we want to share with you a few announcements. Uh, first is uh, that there's a link there in the chat that you can download at tonight's order of worship. Uh, mine's not in color, but it looks like this. Uh, I want to encourage you to get a copy of that. Uh, not only will it allow you to participate um, in the liturgy of tonight's service, but you'll also see uh, lyrics for our music uh, and as well as some uh, artwork and statements from the artists based on the lectionary readings for tonight's service. So please do get a copy of that order of worship and follow along with us um, tonight. As I mentioned uh, last week at Wink, tonight we'll be receiving, uh, in addition to our normal offering, um, the Christmas Joy Offering. And so that is a special offering of the Presbyterian Church USA. Uh, and it goes to support uh, the needs of current and retired church leaders, as well as helping to support um, and train future church leaders, especially in communities of color. Uh, and so we hope that uh, tonight, as we respond to God's word to us, that you might consider uh, that offering as an option and that you would give generously. Uh, as you know, I'm sure, this week is also Christmas Eve. And here at the Presbyterian Church of Lawrenceville, we have three Christmas Eve services uh, that are available. We hope that maybe you'll come to one or some or even all of those. Our four o'clock service is going to be an interactive uh, family service. We'll be rebroadcasting our Christmas pageant that our children put together. Uh, and, but we're going to tweak it a little bit and make it a little bit more interactive for those who are gathered. We're going to gather together on Zoom. Uh, for that service. We'll also live stream that Zoom call through our Facebook page, but, but we encourage you to participate in that through Zoom. Uh, and that link can be found if you go to pclawrenceville.org slash live. That's our live worship page, and you'll see a button there that says join us on Zoom. We'll also have a 5.30 drive-in candlelight service, uh, and that is just a brief time to gather together to um, sing a few carols together, to hear the Christmas story, uh, from your vehicles, we'll broadcast that service over uh, at FM radio station. Uh, and then at the end of the service, we'll, we'll gather outside in a circle around the parking lot, the cemetery, and we'll uh, light candles and sing Silent Night together. Uh, we'll do it quietly. We'll do it in family groups. We'll be socially distanced. Uh, we'll wear masks and we'll observe all the protocols and safety guidelines uh, that we can. Uh, but we hope that that will be a meaningful a time for you. Just a brief service there. And of course, our eight o'clock Christmas Eve service, so traditional service, uh, festival service, will be uh, live streamed on our Facebook page and also on our Zoom. Uh, we'll have a Zoom uh, on Zoom as well. And so we hope that you'll join us uh, for that. Uh, tomorrow night, uh, as we've been sharing each week, is our longest night service. And so we do hope that you will join us tomorrow at 5 o'clock p.m. right here on our Worship at a New Key Facebook page. Uh, this has been a, just a, a tough year, uh, knowing that this season is oftentimes hard for a number of people. And we also want to acknowledge that this has just been a, a difficult year, and, and we want to grieve and lament together uh, for all that we've lost, uh, for all that we've lost as a community of faith, and for all that we hope for. And so it's a service for you. We hope that you'll join us certainly live if you can't meet uh, make that happen tomorrow night at 5. You can view that service anytime uh, that works for your schedule. It will be right on our Facebook page as well as our YouTube account. Next Sunday, there is no worship in a new key in the evening. Uh, we'll be having a kind of combined worship service with our 10 a.m. Uh, traditional service. And again, we're going to gather together on Zoom and we'll have an interactive service uh, in which we offer prayers together. We'll sing Christmas carols um, and it will be fun. So we hope that you'll join us uh, for that as well. Friends, that uh, concludes our announcements tonight. Uh, let us quiet our hearts and our minds as we prepare for worship. I knew joy, but when I heard the laugh of my child, suddenly joy was overflowing. I knew love, but when he held my hand, suddenly love was overflowing. 
I knew God, but when you showed me grace, when you forgave me, when you loved me, when you raised me, suddenly God was overflowing. So let our worship be a reminder that God is here and we are never alone. This is a community. This is the body of Christ. This is home. Let us worship God together. I dream of music that makes my heart swell. I dream of trees that take my breath away. I dream of sunrises that wrap me in light. I dream of family dinners that make that feel like home. I dream of church services that give me hope. 
I dream of love as the default. So today, as we draw near to Christmas Day, we light the candle of love. May this light burn bright as a reminder that God is here and God is love. We are not alone. Thanks be to God for a love like that. Amen. Amen. Join me in our prayer of confession. Let us pray. God of good news, you say to me, you are highly favored. But I struggle to see how that could be. You say to me, do not be afraid. But I'm afraid all the time. You say to me, even the impossible is possible. Just look at Elizabeth. But hope slips through my hands like water. The impossible still feels impossible. So today I pray. Today we pray. Teach us to sing like Mary. Teach us to laugh like Elizabeth. Teach us to trust like the angels. And forgive us when we can only do one at a time or none at all. Amen. Friends, we trust in the triune God. Lover, beloved, and love itself, inherently relational, always connected, and never alone. We believe that the same belovedness that exists for all of us, we believe that we are forgiven, that we are loved and claimed, we are never alone. Thanks be to God for a love like that. peace of Christ be with you. Each week, we pass a piece here at Wink. It's an important part of what we do at Worshiping Community. We are acknowledging and reaffirming to one another that we are not alone, that God's love is present, and that we love one another. Please share a sign of Christ's peace with those in your homes and here in the chat on Facebook. The peace of Christ be with you and also with you. Peace. Our scripture reading today comes from Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 45. Listen and hear the word of the Lord. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, 
the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative, Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what, would, what was spoken to her by the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends, please pray with me. God, may we with adventurous expectation greet your word to us tonight, as Mary did and as Elizabeth did. God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be honoring and pleasing to you, for you, O God, are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So, have you ever uh, noticed in Scripture, uh, every time an angel appears, what's the first thing that they say, right? Do not be afraid, right? I can't help but wonder if angels were just like these really terrifying looking creatures, right? Or maybe even more than that, they uh, were just really good at sneaking up on unexpected uh, recipients of God's word, right? We can imagine, and suddenly there before Mary appeared an angel of the Lord, just as she was entering a dark room, right, or walking around the corner or while she still had her headphones on and her back was turned. Um, but alas, Scripture is not quite that detailed, is it? Uh, and nevertheless, what we do have here in our Scripture reading uh, tonight is a very familiar Advent and Christmas text in which the angel Gabriel, a messenger of the Lord, visits Mary and shares with her God's dream, God's plans. Gabriel shares with Mary news that God's promises will be fulfilled and that God's salvation will come to fruition in a Savior and in a Messiah. And what's more is that this dream involves Mary. She will be the one to bear the Son of God, God is not acting separate from God's creation here, but rather God has chosen Mary to help bring about this good news of great joy for all people. God's dream for all of creation here hinges on God's desire for Mary, indeed all of us, to play an essential part in bringing that dream to life. Now, before Mary can even respond, we're told that she is, quote, much perplexed. Some other translations uh, suggest that Mary is confused, which I think makes the angel's consolation, do not be afraid, that we just joked about a bit odd, if she's confused or perplexed. Um, I was listening to a podcast this past week uh, based on the lectionary, you know, as, as one does uh, regularly. And uh, the hosts of that podcast were adamant that Mary was not afraid here, right? This text says she was perplexed, she was confused, but she was not afraid. 
Now, I don't know if I actually agree with that, right? Because in Greek, the word here uh, that is translated as perplexed or confused is this word diatorazo. Uh, and it's a word that only appears one time right here in the whole New Testament. And so we know from other ancient Greek resources that perhaps this word is better understood to mean agitated or greatly troubled, or maybe even more literally, um, that she is wholly and entirely disturbed, like into her very being disturbed by whatever this news is. And so we can be assured that here as the angel appears to Mary, she is thrown off. She's certainly afraid, and she is disturbed to her core. Yes, God's dream is indeed good news for all of creation, and yes, God's dream lifts up ordinary folks like you and me and Mary, ordinary people who will do extraordinary things by the power of the Holy Spirit. But bearing the Son of God means that Mary is going to lose some of her relationships, her friends, her family. Bearing the Son of God means that Mary is going to have to have some really difficult conversations. Bearing the Son of God means that Mary will not be popular and that her life may even be threatened. I can only imagine how overwhelming and how jarring and how disorienting and even terrifying that moment must have been for Mary. In light of all of the events this past year, uh, as we've experienced them, as I consider all that we as people of faith hope for uh, this season, in light of all of the events this past year, as I consider what it means for each one of us to bear the Son of God to the world, I feel a little overwhelmed. How about you? The good news is indeed good news to be sure, and yet the work set before us as dreamers is daunting, and it's disorienting, it's difficult, and it's dangerous. It's kind of that feeling of wanting something so bad, but also hoping for any other way to bring it about. Perhaps that's the kind of headspace that Mary is in here in this story. Surely, God, you've got the wrong person. The things you're saying that I'll do, they're, they're impossible. I can't do that. Mary's a common name. Maybe you're looking for somebody else. Why me? I do not want to be the one to have to do this. And yet, right, still Mary responds to God. Quoting the great prophets Paul McCartney and John Lennon, Mary reluctantly says, let it be. Let it be with me as you have said. It's a kind of open-ended response to be sure. There's a lot of unresolved tension there in her response. Mary may not know fully what this news means for her or for her life yet. She may even still be skeptical that God can even do anything worthwhile with her. But nevertheless, Mary is open to the God who is calling her. And perhaps that's what God is asking of us this Advent season. As we prepare for Christmas together, are you willing to carry this dream? Are you willing to bear the Son of God to the world? In the church, we tend uh, to move from the Annunciation, that is Mary's visit from the angel Gabriel uh, to the Magnificat, Mary's uh, joyful uh, response of praise. But it's what happens, I think, in the middle that thing that we usually skip over that is so important. Mary goes and she visits Elizabeth. And in doing so, she infer, affirms excuse me, the fact that she is not alone in carrying this dream. Mary affirms that we all 
are not alone in carrying this dream. Right? Is God, is God with her? Of course God is with her. She knows that. Gabriel told her that, but when bearing the Son of God to the world means that you're worried about being alienated and marginalized and potentially even stoned to death by your family, to say, well, at least God loves you, God is with you, is not really helpful. We long for some tangible evidence of that reality, of God's presence with us. And for Mary, that was Elizabeth. Elizabeth embodied that reality for Mary. Now, I think it's important to point out, because I think it's also easy to miss this uh, when we read it in Scripture, but when Mary runs to Elizabeth's home, there's a very real moment there uh, when we truly don't know what will happen next, right? Because Elizabeth is the wife of a temple priest, And here, Mary shows up on her doorstep, young and unmarried and now pregnant. It was a risk for Mary to go to Elizabeth. But it says so much about their relationship as well. Jane Schauberg and Sharon Ringe in the Women's Bible Commentary suggest that Elizabeth, even though she's not given a title here, functions as a prophet. Filled with the Holy Spirit, the text says, uh, rather than shaming Mary, Elizabeth praises her as blessed among women for her faith. In her fear and in her grief and in her confusion, Mary turns to Elizabeth with this dream And rather than turning her away, Elizabeth embraces Mary. Rather than turning her away, Elizabeth affirms Mary by making uh, the first and only Christological confession uh, by a woman in the entire uh, Gospel of Luke. Why has this happened to me, Elizabeth says, that the mother of my Lord would come to me? I love the uh, artwork this week that's been included in your order of worship uh, of Elizabeth embracing Mary. And I would commend that to you and the uh, related artist statement there uh, later in the service uh, during our response time. Uh, Check that out. It's really a moving piece of artwork. Uh, Lyle Garrity, who's the artist, She says this in her statement about Mary and Elizabeth's interaction. She says, as soon as Mary falls into Elizabeth's arms, Elizabeth knows and feels Mary's words to be true. With her embrace, Elizabeth communicates, yes, I feel it too. We are pregnant with promise. We carry this dream Together, this is not a dream deferred, it's a dream confirmed, a dream shared, a dream that will birth joy. Elizabeth's words and her actions here invite us to reflect on our own openness to the ways that God chooses to act in our world. What is God doing through the unexpected people in our society today? Where is God at work through people whom we may exclude or through people whom we may treat as shameful or through those that we might write off? What would it mean to reach out to those folks and to carry their dreams along with them? This Advent, will we listen to the Spirit's prompting when bearers of God's dream show up on our doorsteps? This week we recognize what preceded Mary's song of praise. News that was disorienting and bewildering, possibly even life-threatening. But together, together, Mary and Elizabeth find courage, and they find comfort in spite of their unusual circumstances. And so, friends, we too are called to carry 
and to support and to encourage one another's dreams, your dreams and my dreams, God's dreams. For those who dream are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Friends, we've come now to the time in our worship service where we invite you to respond to God's word um, to you as you feel led. Of course, there are a number of ways that you may choose to do that. We've already mentioned earlier in the service that you may choose to make uh, an offering. Uh, you can do that on our website, pclawrenceville.org, and then click the blue donate button in the upper right hand corner. If you'd like to give to the Christmas Joy offering, you can do that uh, there as well and just select the Christmas Joy special offering from the drop-down menu. Uh, you may choose to get involved here at Wink. We're, of course, always looking for help. And these days, as we live stream, we need lots of tech support as well. 
Uh, and you don't have to be a techie to do it. Uh, it's very easy. Uh, so we'd love to get you involved behind the scenes or in front of the camera uh, to lead worship. Uh, we are a community, and we, uh, that's how we get things done together, right? We're not alone. Uh, so maybe you want to get involved, shoot me an email, send Marsha an email, uh, and we will plug you in and somewhere. Uh, we'll have our music playing. Uh, you can choose to sit and listen to the music and look at the artwork that comes up there. Or perhaps you want to reflect and meditate and talk about the artwork that's in your order of worship. Please do that. Or chat with somebody uh, online. Maybe you want to sit quietly or, or pray or whatever it is uh, that you feel led to do in response to God's word to you. We'll take a few moments to respond and then we'll gather back together with prayer. Let's respond now. There's so much sorrow here, so much shame and hurt and fear. And this grief feels like the ache is never ending. The night is long, can't find sleep Where's peace gone? It's so hard to breathe It's time to dream fierce dreams Like Mary did Brave dreams Like Joseph did New dreams Please join me in a time of prayer. O oh, loving and gracious God, we sit before you today together, but physically apart in your presence, waiting. 
We wait and give thanks for the promise of your life. We wait for the freedom that can only be felt through your grace. We wait together before you with so many things on our hearts. The violence and vandalizing of two historic beloved black churches last Saturday in DC. Another act of hatred against our black brothers and sisters that illuminates the glaring racial disparities that continue to exist in our country. The mounting COVID death toll. Those we, we know who we have lost and those that we don't know as well. The socioeconomic disparity and disadvantage that has been made much more evident and unequal this year. The regular everyday challenges we face. God, I can only speak for myself, but sometimes I'm so overwhelmed by sorrow that I feel unable to move forward and take action. I imagine I am not alone in this. Loving God, remind us that through you, there is always hope. There is always the promise that we are never alone. There is always a way to work for justice. You are the breath that breathes life back into our lungs, that gives us the strength to begin again and again. God, I pray that you breathe life back in all of our lungs today. Give us courage to do the right thing, strength to continue to fight for those who are most oppressed in our society. Love to give back to ourselves and to those around us. Remind us that with you, we are never alone. God, renew us this Advent season as we wait. And now together we pray the prayer that you taught us saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Yeah.
Friends, if we are truly to bear the Son of God to the world this Advent season, then we find ourselves, as we just sang, crying out, Come, thou long-expected Jesus, while at the same time boldly declaring joy to the world. As we go from this place, we go to do just that. But we're reminded always that those who dream are not alone. We go from this place with God. We go from this place with the grace and the strength of Jesus Christ. And we go from this place to carry and encourage and support one another and bearing witness to the grace and love of God, which we celebrate this Christmas season. And so may the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us tonight and this day and forevermore. Amen.